Shalom, welcome to the Jewish Task Force, JTF. I'm Chaim Ben Pesach, and we have another program with the great David Ben Moshe. Well, this is a program where you're going to learn a lot about Tampon Tim Wolves, who is uh, Kamala Harris's choice for vice president, and we're going to give you the latest on why there's a very very high danger that she's going to win this election. She's leading in the polls now. She's taken the lead now in the latest five national polls. She's leading in all five. And on statewide races, on the statewide on the, the statewide basis, in the bat battleground states, to win the Electoral College, she's leading there too. So the odds are that she's going to win this election unless something happens uh, to prevent that. So we've got quite a challenge ahead of us. Plus, of course, the, we want to discuss the latest with the Hilltop Youth in Israel, to a certain degree, we're going to go into that. I don't know how much time we're going to have, uh, but we'll we'll try to squeeze that in. And of course, David always has important things to to uh, bring uh, to bring to your attention as well. But before we get to all of that, this program is dedicated to Erefuash Lema, complete recovery for Liat Bat Shifra, Niv Ben Bina, Yitzchak Ben Sara. Sharon Mitman, Shlomo Ben Sara, Dorit Bat Sara, Ruven Ben Shoshana, and Ruth Bat Sara. And to Ilui Neshamat, Elevating of the Souls for Malka Bat Meir, Allegra Bat Shlomo, Daniel Nankin, Victor Chazdai, Pesach Seb Ben Dov, Lunita Adler, Shifra Hoffman, Ruven Hoffman, Barry Hoffman, Harab Mir Kahana, Harab Benjamin Kahana, Tsipora Fegi, Bat Liba, Yosef Ben Meir, Robert Mitman, Dennis Shor, Helen Friedman, Charles Olat, and Yair Levine. First, let's get to the let's get the bad news out first. Let's get that out of the way first, because there is bad news. Uh, and, and by the way, when we again, I want to again bring to your attention and remind you that when we give you bad news, remember, in the end, the news is fantastic. Because even if there's bad news in the immediate future, in the long term, when we eventually have Geulah Shlema, the final redemption, Hashem promises us in the Bible, the final redemption will be Le'olam Va'ed, forever. In other words, the good news will be eternal. There'll be a new world with eternal good news and a magnificent world that God will be the ruler of. That is coming. Everything Hashem promises in the Bible is coming true. You have to be blind not to see all of this. It's all happening in our time. And it's been happening now for, for, for quite a few years now, certainly since the resurrection of the state of Israel. So good things will come eventually. Even if we bring you bad news now, good things eventually will come, and that will be eternal. But... In the interim, there could be a lot of suffering and a lot of problems and a lot of terrible death and destruction, which is what we want to avoid. And speaking of bad news, the latest five national polls, as I mentioned, from all, all of the five polls, national polls that were taken in early August, show Kamala Harris now in the lead. The Maris poll shows her leading 51 to 48 percent against Donald Trump. The Survey USA poll, 48% to 45%. The Morning Consult poll, 48% to 44%. CBS News, this is closer, but still she's in the lead, 50% to 49%. And uh, TIPP poll, 46% to 45%. So uh, three of the polls show her three points ahead or four points ahead. And then the last two polls show her one point ahead. She's ahead in all five. That's what's important, that there's a consistent pattern here where she's going up and she's in the lead. And in the battleground states, I'm not going to go through the figures, but she's ahead now in the battleground states. And she's ahead in enough battleground states to easily win the Electoral College. So if the election were held now, Kamala Harris, the cackling hyena of the extreme left, this anti-Semite, this vicious, evil woman, she would become the next president of the United States if the election were held now. And by the way, I hope you Trumpsters are not going to say, well, we don't believe the polls. Donald Trump believes the polls. He always, when the polls are in his favor, he always quotes the polls. Always. He, 
He, if you remember, when he was running in 2016, he used to spend a half hour of his speech quoting polls. So he certainly believes in polls. And again, the polls look bad, and I do believe the polls are accurate. Remember, this is the same United States that twice elected Barack Hussein Osama president by big margins. And Kamala Harris has resurrected the Obama coalition. Now she's getting Obama's old voters and the country demographically is even more favorable to her now because of illegal immigration and all the other factors that are occurring in this country. So she's ahead right now. Now, let's understand what it means she picked Tim Walz as her running mate. Last week, it looked like she was going to pick Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro. Baruch Hashem, thank God that she didn't pick Josh Shapiro, the self-hating Jew. The worst thing for us is always when self-hating Jews get in high positions. The worst people are the self-hating Jews. We really dodged a bullet with that one. Thank God she didn't pick Josh Shapiro. And the reason she didn't pick him is because she she always goes with the most extreme left on everything. She is just an extreme leftist. And Tim Walz was the most, all of the people she was considering were all leftists. They're all Bolsheviks. I mean, Josh Shapiro spends all of his time imitating Barack Hussein Osama. It, you, you, you would think Barack Hussein Osama speaking if you didn't see him. Uh, just a pathetic low life. Um, you know, just the lowest of the low. But she wanted, but the candidate who was on most extreme on the left is Tim Walz. And that's the one that she wound up picking. By the way, as far as the self-hating Jews, Ben Stiller, who is the son of a self-hating Jew, he's, he's not Jewish because his, his mother was not Jewish. But his father was. He, the, you, remember, you remember the Stiller, you remember the... the Stiller and Ann Mira. Yeah. Is that who you're talking about? Yeah. And Ann Mira was, of course, an Irish Catholic. And uh, Stiller was uh, a self-hating Jew who married her. And they produced Ben Stiller. May his name and memory be obliterated. May the name of the wicked rot. This beast, who is viciously anti-Israel, hates Israel obsessively. He just gave a $150,000 contribution to Kamala Harris's campaign, and he said he's giving her the money because, and I quote, all white Jews, all white Jewish men want to be black. I want to be black, and all white Jews want to be black. Well, that's funny. I'm a white Jew, and I don't want to be black. Do you want to be black, uh, David? Not in this world. Okay. I don't want to be black in any world. But uh, and again, it's not it's you know, and again, it's not that we're expressing any prejudice, but I'm proud of who I am. I'm a Jew and I'm proud of who I am. I certainly uh, I certainly do not want uh, I mean, not to be proud to be a Jew. The people of the Bible, God's chosen people. And you can't get whiter than me. If I roll up my pants leg, you'll go snow blind. Well, according to Ben Stiller, all of us want to be black. That's what he said. Now, he obviously does want to be black, that 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 filthy, self-hating cockroach. So why doesn't and he John, go live and, with them? Yeah, and Josh Shapiro, yeah, he doesn't know. He doesn't live with them. He does not. He One thing about these self-hating Jews and the self-hating whites, they don't want to live with blacks. You don't see them moving into black ghettos or black slums or black housing projects. They could save a lot of money. Uh, rent is much cheaper there. But that you don't see them doing. Uh, yet they claim they want to be black. As long as they don't have to live in the black neighborhood, they claim they want to be black. Anyway, um, Josh Shapiro was that type, and even he was not good enough for Kamala Harris. This, this such anti-Semites. She didn't pick. She picked Tom Walls partly because she wanted the most extreme left winger, but also because of anti-Semitism. The Democrat Party is so toxically anti-Semitic, so violently anti-Semitic, that Josh Shapiro was unacceptable because he, even though he's a self-hating Jew and he was against Israel, not good enough. You're a Jew. We don't want any Jews. No Jews can. No Jews should apply. And she agrees with that. 
she went along with that and she picked uh, Tim Walz. Thank God. We don't want these self we don't want self-hating Jews in, in office either. But as far as Tim Walz is concerned, what a vicious anti-Semite. What a Hamas supporter. These statements he issued uh, defending the Hamas terrorists, in effect defending them, uh, talk condemning Israel for 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 the puny, wimpy war that Israel is waging in Gaza, which is such a puny, wimpy war. Israel is not doing one percent of what she should, should, should what what she should be doing to the Arab Muslim Nazi enemy. Not even one percent she's not doing. And but this is too much for Tim Walls. He condemns Israel. He's a Hamas supporter. And he also defends the, the like uh, Kamala Harris, she also defended and, and supports the, the demonstrators on college, the anti-Semitic demonstrators on college campuses who, who chant for Israel's destruction and chant for the death of Jews. Kamala Harris supports them and Tim Wool supports them. And they do support them and agree with them. And they agree with them. They praise them claim, you know, I don't know what they would claim. I guess they would deny that they're anti-Semitic. They could deny all they want. They support Jew-killing Nazi beasts who are chanting for Israel's annihilation and support the extermination of the Jewish people. And Tim Walls, when the Black Lives Matter, because he's the governor of Minnesota, and so when in Minneapolis, the biggest city in Minnesota, you had the Black Lives Matter riots. Tim Walls said that the riot, that the that the Black Lives Matter riots were exciting. He thought they were exciting. Of course, like all white liberals, uh, they were exciting as long as he 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 as long as he was far away from from the action. He wouldn't dare go into the neighborhood while they were riding because they they'd see his white face and they'd kill him. But sitting in his wealthy suburban home, he said they were exciting. With police protection. Yeah, he supports. Yeah, he's. But of course, he, he's a hypocrite. All of these, all of these, the Hollywood people, the white leftists, the, the Democrat politicians, all hypocrites and phonies. And but he supported the Black Lives Matter riots. And together with Kamala, you know, Kamala Harris, she donated to organizations to bail out the rioters and also to bail out people who let, by the way, one of the people that she, that, that the organization that she helped financially, one of the people that was bailed out then went on to commit a brutal murder. So uh, while he, while he was on bail, I mean, this is the type of, this is the type of scum that we're talking about. Imagine them in the White House. And he passed a lot of legislation as governor of Minnesota. He was a very busy beaver. He passed a lot of legislation. Transgender surgery for little children. That's one of the bills that passed, well, which he sponsored as governor. Driver's licenses for illegal aliens. Sanctuary cities and turning Minnesota into a sanctuary state. In other words, giving the big welcome sign to all the illegal aliens to come flooding into the country. Imagine him in the White House with Kamala Harris. <clears throat> she was in charge of the border, as you know. And she brought 20 million illegal aliens into the country. She was in charge of the border, brought 20 million illegals into the country. <clears throat> she was the border czar, and czar is a good term for her. It fits. If they win this election, God forbid, in a second term, or, or it's like a second term for Joe Biden, for the late Joe Biden, in effect. But if she wins the election, they're going to let 50 million illegals into the country. 50 million illegals will come across because the number of illegals keeps, it, you know, they're going to take any restrictions off the right before the election. They have slight, slight limitations that they place there. That's all going to go. And they're going to have fifth. We're going to have fifty million illegals stampeding into the country. If that happens with America, where America is now demographically, that's the end of the United States. It's over, and that's what they intend to do if they win. I I really think, by the way, that this this may be the most important election in, for America's survival in American history, because 
Uh, if they win, it's over. Now, why is Tim Walls called Tampon Tim? Another bill he passed said that we have to put, that they must put tampons in all boys' bathrooms. You heard it right, tampons in boys' bathrooms. Why would you want a tampon in a boy's bathroom? Because there are girl there are girls who we can't call girls because they transitioned. They consider themselves to be boys. These are these are girl these these are girls who go to boys' bathrooms and want tampons in the boys' bathrooms. And he said we have to have tampons available for these boys. He calls them boys. And you know there's a dispute. Because, and I propose, I'm going to propose a compromise now, because as you know, I'm a very compromising, reasonable person, very moderate, and I'm a civil rights leader. So I'm going to propose a compromise. When you have a male who calls himself a woman, he identifies as a woman. And he has a penis, and he's a male, but he identifies as a woman. They demand these males with penises. These are men with penises. They demand that you call them she and her. They demand that. They want to be known as she and her because they say they're really women. And then there are other people who insist upon calling them he or him. Who say, no way. They're biological males. You got to call them he or him. I propose a compromise. Let's call them it. This way... This way, you're not, you know, you're not taking sides. It's a neutral term, and it's a good way to identify them. Call them it from now on. That, at least, doesn't that sound like a real? I think it's a reasonable compromise. Well, if you have X Y chromosomes, no matter what you do to yourself to look different, you're a man. And if you have X X chromosomes, no matter what you do to distort your body, you're still a woman. And you can't defeat biology. Now, well, they 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 would they would uh, dispute that, and they you know. Anyway, the whole it's just what a world we live in. It's unbelievable we're even having this discussion. It's just <laughs> absolutely unbelievable that even this discussion that we could that that this could even be a subject. Uh, it's it's incredible. And if and now, in Tim Walz's Minnesota, you'll be fired if you criticize transgender um, surgery for minor children, or if you or if you criticize their their program of bringing transgender men. These are again are males, full male with a male body, who wear dresses and have makeup and lipstick and dress like women. And, and take silicon uh, shots so that they'll have breasts like women. It doesn't make you a woman. And they go, and these, these individuals go to kindergartens and first grade classes in Minnesota and explain to the children there about the options, as if a five-year-old child understands what option is, of a little boy becoming a little girl and a little girl becoming a little boy. Wouldn't you like to be a little girl, they say to these little boys who don't who have no idea. You know, they don't know what one thing from the other. They have no idea at the age of five what's going on even. And they go to these classes and they read them stories and teach them that this is good. There, there have been cases of men. They had one man who... Um, Again, a male with a beard, and bre and but he had breasts because he was taking silicone treatment. So he's he has a beard and breasts and a dress on, and makeup and you know makeup and lipstick like a woman. And he has but but he has a but he has a beard, a full beard. And he is one of the lecturers on the lecture circuit for kindergarten kids. With a red the, nose on him, he's a clown. This is Tim Walls. This is Tim Walls in Minnesota. If you like that, if you think that that's normal and that's good, then uh, Tim Walls was a good pick for, for Kamala Harris. Now, she had a rally 
with transgenders recently. I don't know if you saw it, David. But she had a get out the vote rally with transgenders. I heard. I didn't see it, but I heard. And they were all sitting on a couch. And they were all saying, we got to get this there now. You know, they were all they were all sitting there and they and and these are all these were all men who looked like and dressed like women, a hundred percent like women. And uh and she, you know, and she was giving them a high five and she's agreeing with them and saying and, and telling them how proud she is of them. She's proud of them, she said. She's proud of this. She thinks that this is something to be proud of. And they were saying, oh, yes, we must get the vote out for you. Oh, yes, we want to get the vote out. Uh, let me tell you something. If you don't think this is a nightmare, then you belong, then you should be hospitalized. You belong, we should have compassion. You should be put in the mental institution and receive electric shock treatment. Because there's something very wrong with you if you don't think this is a nightmare. I mean, this is just the... Uh, and, um, and of course, as far as Israel is concerned, you know, the first thing these two communists are going to do, these two communist Jew haters, is slap sanctions on all the hilltop youth and sanctions on all of our people in Judea and Samaria, create a situation... Uh, where there'll be a danger of getting the of of expel of the Jews in Judea and Samaria being expelled from those hilltops. If that happens, there'll be a PLO terrorist state. God forbid. Terrible, terrible danger for Israel. Tremendous danger. Now, they say there are two campaigns here. There's the Kamala Harris campaign. There's the Donald Trump campaign, but that's not really true because the news media is part of Kamala Harris's campaign. They do more for her than her own campaign does. And, and they accuse Donald Trump of exaggerating the New York Nazi Times and the other media. They say that Donald Trump has exaggerated in his attacks against Kamala Harris because he called her dumb and because he said that she has a low IQ. The reality is he's not exaggerating. He's understating what the situation is. She's not dumb. She's retarded. Without a teleprompter, she can't say anything. She's a complete moron. A moron. Her IQ is lower than, than, than the late Joe Biden. And I'm talking about Joe Biden now. The only thing she knows how to do is memorize lines and 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 read from a teleprompter. If she, she has not held any press conferences, she won't hold a press conference because she can't answer questions. And, you know, her and Tim Walz, the communist, they said that J.D. Vance and Donald Trump are weird. Should they say J.D. Vance? And by the way, I've listened now. I've had a chance now to see J.D. Van speaking, and also to hear him. He's, hold, he's held press conferences. He held a press conference earlier today, the day that we're doing this. Uh, we're doing this on August 7th. This this uh, video is being taped on August 7th. And he held a press conference today in Detroit, Michigan, with hostile reporters. And let me tell you something. He is very good in terms of the, que the way he answers questions. I don't know if he's going to be good as vice president. You know I don't trust politicians. So I don't trust him. The you know, We get betrayed too many times. But he answers questions very well. He's a very good spokesman. Donald Trump picked an excellent spokesman. There's nothing weird about him. They are saying in the media and and the and, and Kamala Harris and and J and um, Tim Walls they held a rally and they kept saying over and over again that J D Vance and Donald Trump are weird. They called them weirdos. They called them weird. They're weird. You want men with beards and, and breasts to give classes, to give lectures to five-year-old kids in a kindergarten? And, you're, and, and, and you have the nerve to say that J.D. Vance is weird because he doesn't agree with that? He's weird? 
When mm-hmm. I was in kindergarten, we learned how to count from one to ten and what each number looks like. And once we learned that, we learned how to tell time on an analog clock. And we learned how to tie our shoes. I finally learned how to tie my shoes. Now I'm so old, I can no longer bend down and tie my shoes. Yeah. Well, um, by the way, I don't know if there are people watching us who have children, kindergarten age. If you have children in the public schools, this is the type of, this is the type of crap that they're teaching them. Uh, just so that you'll know. I mean, this is really, really... I apologize for the language. It's just, it's it's just incredible what's going on. It is really, really frightening. It's frightening isn't the word for it. If you're a parent and you go up to a meeting with the board, the school board, and you complain, you get on an FBI watch list as a potential terrorist. They have actually called the police and threatened to arrest parents who complained about this. They threatened to arrest the parents. They accuse the parents of committing a hate crime because they don't support transgender brainwashing of their children. That's a hate crime. I mean, this is, and by the way, in Canada, it is a hate crime. You know that you, in Canada, you're not allowed to say that homosexuality is an abomination. Quote the Bible. You're not allowed to quote the Bible and say that in Canada. It's actually a hate crime. They have arrested people for saying this, for calling it an abomination. People have been placed under arrest and in the end, they get a fine, but it's illegal. Um, and in the Minnesota of Tim Walz and in the California of Kamala Harris, this is the same as Canada. They want to make it the same as Canada. In fact, in California, there are cities in California where if you don't want your children to get transgender education, they'll take your children away from you. They'll claim you're an unfit parent. I mean, it's just, I mean, where are we going here? And, and incidentally, I'm not exaggerating at all. At all. This is really, really, really happening. And... What Tim Walls and Kamala Harris want to do, because Kamala Harris made California a sanctuary state, Tim Walls made Minnesota a sanctuary state. What does it mean, a sanctuary state? That means they're telling illegals, we will never report you. We will protect you, and you can come here. We're going to give you driver's licenses. We're going to give you jobs. We're going to give you free housing. We're going to protect you. We're going to give you welfare and food stamps and Social Security benefits and... Uh, and what they call SSI, which is Social Security benefits for people who are not senior citizens, because very few of the illegals are seniors. And we're also going to, and we're also going to uh, give you Medicare and Medicaid and health, health, health care. In other words, you're going to get, you're going to be treated better than American citizens in our state. And so, surprise, surprise. The number of illegals coming triples and quadruples in those states. They all go running into those states from all over the world. They come from all over the world to go there. What a surprise. One of the illegals tell, tells their family back home, do you know what they're doing for us? They put me in a hotel. They're giving me free health care. They give me free meals. It's unbelievable. Something which they never got back home in their home country. Everybody, they spread the word and everybody in the country packs up and goes to the border to cross the border. That's where we're headed. And it's going to be an avalanche. It's going to be an avalanche of illegals overrunning every city, every town, every community. <clears throat> That's where we're going with Tim Walls and Kamala Harris. Busloads are coming in now from the Canadian border. People from India and China. And a lot of, uh, and also from Africa and other uh, wonderful Eastern places. Eastern Europeans. Yeah. No, Europeans are not coming here. The people who are coming, and, and you, by the way, Europeans, they wouldn't, they wouldn't give them free hotels and they wouldn't do those things they wouldn't do for Europeans. 
No, they got to wait in line. But uh, yeah. they, they're coming in from uh, Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan. It just it doesn't mean they're coming in mass, a few. But they're coming in from the northern border now, too, because everything is wide open here. So that's where we stand. And believe it or not, we read you the polls. Kamala Harris is on her way to victory right now. She's going to win if things continue like this. Unless something happens and people wake up and turn this around, she's going to win. She's going to win this election. And if you think there's no way someone like her could win, remember, a black Muslim Farrakhan supporter won in 2008 and won by a big margin and then was reelected in 2012 by a big margin. That's what America has become. And I have to ask you an honest question here to the audience. Honest question. If the majority of America votes for this, if this is what the majority of America wants, does America deserve to be saved? I mean, if this is what the America, be, if, they, if they like this, if that's what America has turned into, does America deserve to be saved? Just a question. Just a question. We better turn out for Donald Trump on November, I believe it's November 5th this year. I think, if I'm not mistaken, the election day is November 5th. We had better turn out and support Donald Trump. Israel's survival is on the line. America's survival is on the line. I did see one interesting thing. A Siena poll, which is a left-wing poll, was taken and they were saying the, you know, Kamala Harris had a 13-point lead in New York State, which is smaller than in the past because New York has been so overwhelmed. That's one place where Trump is stronger than he was four years ago and eight years ago. Trump is stronger in New York now. But he's still 13 points behind. But two interesting statistics came out in that poll. The Jewish vote, which traditionally is left, uh, the American Jews, traditionally, most of them are leftists. Israeli Jews, by the way, are right wing. Israeli Jews are right wing and can't stand left wing uh, Jews. But American Jews traditionally vote Democrat. In this latest Siena poll, you know what the, you know what the results were? among Jewish voters in New York, 50% Trump, 49% Kamala Harris. They were surprised. They said, wow, he's, at, he's leading by one point, but he's actually leading among Jewish voters. We haven't seen that in polls. That's That was interesting. So there is a backlash among Jewish voters in favor of Donald Trump. Um, oh, another interesting statistic in that poll he was leading by one point among Latino voters. Interesting. Latinos, why would Latinos support Donald Trump? He's against immigration. Latinos want massive uh, illegal immigration, right? A lot of Latinos don't. A lot of Latinos realize that the illegal immigrants are taking their jobs and making their neighborhoods dangerous and bringing fentanyl and other narcotics into their neighborhoods and endangering their children when their children go to school. The gangs, the drugs, the fentanyl, taking of jobs, all the problems that are being caused by this. Latinos in New York have turned against the illegals. And Jews in New York more and more are turning toward Trump and against Kamala Harris and Tim Walz. Just some interesting statistics. There are two things that we can do, that we have to do in this very dire situation. It's potentially dire, but we are hope. Odlo avda tikvateno. Odlo avda tikvateno means our hope is not yet lost. That's the. That's part of the song Hatikva, the national anthem of Israel, which was written after the Holocaust. The Jews were saying, "Our hope is not yet lost, despite the Holocaust." And that's part of the national anthem of Israel, those words. 
our hope is not yet lost because we have the heroic hilltop youth in Israel that can still prevent the creation of a Palestinian terrorist state. But you better believe that if we don't back the hilltop youth, God forbid, there'll be a Palestinian terrorist state. We had better back them. We better back them now. It's absolutely urgent. It's, if you care about Israel, if you love Israel, it is urgent that we support the hilltop youth now more than ever. If you want to support the heroic hilltop youth, if you really care about Israel, Jews and righteous Gentiles, you go to our Hebrew main page, hayamin.org. And the page is in Hebrew, but don't let that confuse you because there is a donate button in English on top. There's a big donate button in English on top that you'll see right away. You click on the donate button, and in several minutes, you can easily and conveniently donate to the heroic hilltop youth and do something that God will bless you for. That's if you want to do it online. If you want to do it through the regular mail, you make checks and money orders out to JTF and you send it to the P.O. Box, JTF P.O. Box 650327, Fresh Meadows, New York, 11365. We've got to support. That's the first and most important thing we can do is support the Hilltop Youth. There we can make a real historic difference. And the second thing we have to do until Election Day, we got to... We've got to do everything we can to defeat Kamala Harris and Tim Walz and to elect Donald Trump. And, you know, I'm not a Trump fan. I, You know that I preferred Ron DeSantis and 2016 preferred Ted Cruz. But in this election, we have no choice. We had better turn out for Donald Trump uh, because uh, the danger to Israel and the Jewish people is very great from these two left-wing anti-Semites. David? Well, there's more left-wing violence to report on, not on a large scale, but a man was wearing a Trump T-shirt and a woman got out of her car and started screaming at him to take that shirt off. And when he refused, she took her, about, I don't know what you call those, big cups of soda. I'm assuming it was soda. It wasn't, uh, I'd rather have a V8. It wasn't anything healthy. It was probably a smoothie or a soda. And she threw it at him. And, of course, he got soaking wet. And then a man wearing a black MAGA hat went into a store to buy something. And the young man behind the counter, probably uh, 20, 22, maybe 24 years old, started screaming like Bigfoot. You know how those leftists scream, they, that scream that tries to drown you out? He started screaming, then he finally said, get out of this store, get out of this store. I hope he wasn't the owner, but if he, but if he wasn't, he probably got fired because it was all caught on camera, but he wouldn't serve a man, I don't know what he went in to buy, but he wouldn't serve a man wearing a MAGA hat. Can you imagine if he, a man carried on like that because a black man came in and they started screaming like an animal and then yelling, get out, get out, get out. I'm not going to sell you anything. Can you imagine the trouble that person would be in? I hope this guy got fired because he deserved it. And a lot of companies will no longer hire left wingers. They, a, lot of, a lot of major corporations will no longer hire you if you're a grad from Harvard or Yale. Because they expect nothing but trouble from you. Safe space and I can't do this and I can't do that. And I protest this and I protest that. Corporations don't need that. Corporations, for the most part, are there to make profits. Although more and more are becoming politically correct and are putting political correctness ahead of profits. The big corporations are the ones funding all of these demonstrations. Yeah, re regardless of what your your ability is, regardless of how much profit you, as a shareholder, you want them to make for you, they, they put the shareholders last. It's political correctness first. Black, BlackRock and Vanguard are two of the leading causes of this because they're major investors, and once they take control of a company, it veers extreme left. And that's what happened with my gym, Planet Fitness. The original owner was voted out of office because BlackRock took over most of the shares. 
And he was a family man. He wanted a family gym where people didn't feel intimidated by big muscular guys, where you could bring your family. The cost was cheap. So uh, bringing your entire family wouldn't bankrupt you. But they threw him out in favor of now official policy is to allow men in the women's locker room. And even though shareholders, the last shareholder meeting complained, they were told profits later. Right now, we have to care about individual rights. Well, why does the right of a few freaks, uh, you'll pardon the expression, trump the rights of thousands of, <coughs> excuse me, thousands of women across the country? who go to Planet Fitness and have to worry about a man in their locker room now. In England, the British are rioting because of what the Muslims did, knifing children. And the British government, instead of taking their side, is taking the side of the Muslims and is saying that the full weight of the law is going to come down on these rioters. Well, the rioting... I, I don't know what that's going to do. It doesn't. It never does anything. If you want to riot, go to the parliament and make those people see what they did wrong and how they destroy one of the greatest nations in the history of the world. Not what it once was, not even close, but it was still a formidable nation. And your government, those in the parliament and the prime minister destroyed your country turning it into a Muslim haven so that you have many no-go zones unless you don't mind getting beaten up or knifed. And in New York, the violence is so bad that they're attacking restaurant goers now. At some of these New York restaurants, and it's probably in other big cities too, you could eat inside or you could eat outside. They have space on the sidewalk. And it's covered with an awning and there's tables and chairs. Well, if you're one of those diners dining on the outside, a flash mob will come from out of nowhere. And some of them will have knives, some will have guns, and they'll take your watches and your wallets. And that's what's going on all over the restaurant industry in New York City. It's gotten so bad that you really can't eat outside anymore. And on top of that, that the last couple of stores, some most subway stations, whether they're elevated or actual subway in the ground, they uh, it's the station and that's all. But some of the more famous stations, the bigger ones, have a plaza with a lot of stores. Well, the last of the stores say, is saying they're going to close up. They can't take the crime anymore. And if you go down into the subway now, you'll see armed National Guards standing there. So I tell everybody, this is a third world country. If you look at our national debt, which we can never pay off, there's only one way to even begin to pay it off, and that's create a national oil company and drill under the Rocky Mountains, drill in Alaska, and take that money, take the oil, sell it to the oil companies. The only way you're going to get out of this is selling oil. And you'll be eventually, it may take 50 to 100 years, eventually you'll pay the debt off and possibly even become a rich nation, maybe. Uh, but of course, they have to cut back on spending too, and they can't do that. There isn't one brave enough to say we have to cut spending. Well, anyway, we have this tremendous debt, almost $35 trillion. Our infrastructure is crumbling. Our roads, we use the cheapest blacktop. Within three years, it cracks. Within five years, parts of it are starting to lift up. And they put the cheapest patches in. The patches fall apart by the next winter. Sometimes they'll take a, a bridge that has cement and put blacktop patches in. Well, oil and water, cement is water, don't mix. So it spits the patch right out. We don't have roads like they have in England. I don't know about the rest of Europe, but England, the roads stay jet black. You don't see a pothole anywhere. You don't see a crack in the road anywhere. The roads always look brand new. And when you drive on them, they feel brand new. Look at our crime, our crime stats. Look at our schools. 
We were once one of the greatest school country in the world. And today we're ranked 27th. That's actually a few years ago. We're probably below that now. Kids come out of school knowing nothing. They can't even multiply three times three times three. They don't know how many continents. They don't know how many states. They don't know what countries border us, the north and the south. They don't know who we got our independence from. The most common answer is Russia and China. As I mentioned, we have guys with machine guns, just like in Mexico. You go to the beach and there's soldiers standing there with machine guns to make sure you're not mugged or raped. And we have that in the subway to make sure you're not mugged, raped, or murdered. Well, in Russia, when they have a flash mob, I saw a flash mob of Russia. It was like three or four people got together and they started singing, putting on the Ritz. And then about 10 more people came and they were all singing, putting on the Ritz. And it eventually ended up with close to 100 people singing, putting on the Ritz. And that's the difference between a flash mob in Russia and a flash mob in this third world nation. And then we're not the only crazy nation. Look at the Olympics. Look at how they perverted what Christians believe. Would they do that with Muslims? Christianity is the only religion they would do that to. They wouldn't do it to Judaism because they know Jews will complain, oh, you're so anti-Semitic. No, 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 that's not true. They you think they would do it to they, Jews? Oh, come on. There, there's all the, Every single program that you see with Jews, every movie of Jews is all stereotypical anti-Semitic. The worst. The way they speak about Israel and the Jewish people, that's not anti-Semitic? Well, of course. But the I'm worst. Just... you got to be kidding me. They treat Jews worse than Christians. They treat Jews worse than anybody. The Jews are the worst, and 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 the Jew Jewish anti Semites themselves lead lead the anti Semitism sometimes. Well, that we know. But this was a perversion of Christianity. One of the most, I don't. The painting itself isn't holy, but it's one of the most holy scenes in all of Christianity. And they put transgender people there, in the place of religious figures. Why don't they try that with Islam? Next time, next Olympics, try that with Islam. And how many people said they're going to boycott the Olympics, but they tuned in anyway, because watching uh, female water polo or men's bicycling or uh, female volleyball, it's actually men's water polo, female volleyball, especially the beach volleyball, men watch that. Badminton, more important than having a set of principles and sticking to them. Look at how they allowed men to box women in the women's boxing. And the men had no problem. They knocked those women around. Eventually, they're going to end up killing one of those women because your delusion cannot defeat biology. And finally, at least the Jews got some revenge. There was a uh, judo match. And the guy from Turkmenistan, which is a mostly Muslim nation, refused to shake hands with the, his Israeli opponent and started yelling, Allah Akbar. Well, in the match, he, the Turkmenistani got his shoulder dislocated by the Israeli. So, and he was sitting there crying. So, bravo for Israel. And uh, the Israelis did very well in the martial arts and they beat other Muslims too. And now I got, I want to close with one story that goes back to happier times. And if you're Jewish, you can really relate to this. And even if you're not Jewish and you live in the New York metro area, you can relate to this. Our country, when it worked, every group hated every other group. And you lived in your own, you could call it a ghetto, but it was, you lived in your own section of town. Uh, there was no problem if you crossed into the other section. It wasn't like uh, blacks who will kill you or Hispanics because that's their territory and you're invading it. It was just the Italians lived here, the Jews lived there, the wasps lived here, the Germans lived here. And you would have Jewish restaurants in the Jewish area and Italian restaurants in the Italian area. But every group hated every other group. 
And of course, whites hated blacks, blacks hated whites, Jews hated Christians, Christians hated Jews, Catholics hated Protestants, Protestants hated Catholics. The thing is, with all that, the country worked. Look at how we became the most powerful nation in the shortest amount of time. Of course, we don't have that today. But you had these clubs, country clubs, golf clubs, that wouldn't allow Catholic or Jewish members. So what the Jews did was, when the summer came and they wanted to get out of the city, they went to the Catskill Mountains. And there were, maybe you heard of these, I'm sure you heard of these hotels. There were the giant ones, the Concord, Grossingers. Remember Jenny Grossinger? And she uh, came out with rye bread, too, that was sold all over supermarkets. And you had the Pines and Kutcher's and the Neville and the Raleigh and Brickman's Flagler. And my parents would pick me up right from school. I'd walk out of the school into the car and we drive up to the Roxy Hotel in Loch Sheldrake. Loch, of course, means lake. There was no lake. There was about a, two miles into town. And we'd stay at the Roxy Hotel. We had some money, so we went from June 30th to the week before Labor Day. And what did you do in those hotels? You ate and you ate. You went in in the morning and the menu had five or six different juices, about 10 different cold cereals, about five or five to eight hot dishes. And then there was coffee and tea and decaf coffee. And as much as you want, if you wanted more, you tell the waiter and he'd bring more. There was no limit to what you could eat. And it was the same for lunch and the same for supper. And what'd you do all morning? You went and sat in these heavy Adirondack chairs, not the resin chairs you see at the stores now. These were wooden chairs. They must have weighed about 75 pounds. You couldn't move them. And they were painted wood. And you sat there all morning and you vegetated. If you were a kid, you played. But if you were an adult, you sat there and vegetated. Then you got the call for lunch. The dining room was open. After lunch, you went back to your room and you got into your swimming trunks and you sat by the pool and you vegetated some more. And finally, you went for a swim and then you sat in your chaise lounge and vegetated more. The women, meanwhile, were playing mahjong, which is actually a Chinese game. But that's what the women did. And at my table, and we had the same people every year because we were one of the best guests there. We had a friend of my mother. She had a cholesterol of 756. And her body just manufactured it. She had to eat boiled chicken every single night. And eventually, with a 756, she died at 56. It was a shame that they couldn't do anything about her cholesterol. There were no statins back then. Then you got the call for supper. And if it was the weekend, you got all dressed up in suits and the women wore dresses. Not like today, where the women wear suits and the men wear the dresses. And you had dinner. And then you walked around a little bit. And then you had the late, the show, the big show in the casino. And that, the hotel made a lot of money at the bar. And they'd have name talent. And that's where a lot of the Jewish comedians got their start, like Shecky Green, Buddy Hackett. Uh, Jerry Lewis was a busboy, started as a busboy at Brown's Hotel. Brown's was a big one. And uh, my grandparents would come up for two weeks. My mother's younger brother would come up for about 10 days. And uh, the places were packed. But as the late 50s came, things were loosening up and uh, Jews had more freedom to go other places. And when Boeing came out with the 707 jet, it made long travel. It made long travel acceptable because now instead of flying at about 280 miles an hour, you're flying at about 520. And with a tailwind, you were probably up near 600 miles an hour. So travel became viable. And uh, the hotel started fading, fading, fading. And they tried various gimmicks, building uh, indoor swimming pools. Instead of just a late the, a show, they had the late show. The Roxy Hotel was famous for the late, late show. But it was really, it was the beginning of the end. And the decay just kept creeping in. And everybody there was Jewish. The places were kosher. You couldn't get a hot meal on the Sabbath. You were stuck with eating. I was stuck eating Frosted Flakes. I know Haim's going to roll his eyes on that one. And a lot of 
comedians told Jewish jokes that the us young kids didn't understand. But Jack Carter was another one, uh, Alan King. It was actually, as I look back, it was a great time and I miss it. And uh, the Boeing 707 was the main killer of the, uh, the Jewish Alps. And uh, even the Concord, which was like a city, it's gone. Grossingers was like a small city, it's gone. Grossingers held over 2,000 people, the Concord over 3,000 people. Uh, but, and in the 50s, 40s, 30s, these hotels were full to the brim. Uh, we never had a problem because we were steady customers every summer. But now, during the 60s, the country clubs opened themselves up to blacks and to Catholics and to Jews. But as Groucho Marx said, I wouldn't want to join any country club that would have me as a member. I'm, I'm, you, you never went to the Catskills, did you? No, no, oh, no. Actually, I went to. We used to go to the mountains, to Bear Mountains. If you couldn't afford a hotel, and it wasn't cheap by those prices, uh, there were bungalow colonies where you actually stayed in a bungalow, but nobody came in to make your bed. Nobody cooked meals for you. You had to make your own. And uh, all it did was get you out of the city into the country. That's where we went. We were in the bungalows. We were the poor ones. We went to the bungalows. But uh, it was beautiful up there. It was very nice in the summer. Nice and cool. Uh, Bear Mountains. Yeah, it was very nice. Yeah, I don't remember being hot. I don't think it's as humid as the city, and the temperature must have been maybe ten degrees cooler. It was. It was definitely cooler. It was definitely cooler. But anyway, um, that's a, a visit down memory lane. In your heart, you know we're right, and in your guts, you know they're nuts. For JTF, until next week, this is Chaim ben Pesach, and for David ben Moshe, Shalom. <laughs>